you see if you do not understand your money personality it's gonna be very hard for you to make an appropriate decision you know why because if you understand yourself for example if somebody can ask you are you a hot tempered yes or no so if you are then you can be able to know hey when somebody maybe annoys me this is what i do so not make a you know, an abrupt decision that can actually cause chaos. So the same case applies when it comes to money. So understanding exactly what is your money personality, then from that point, or from that point you can be able to say, hey, um, whenever I get money, this is how I behave. Or whenever I get, or uh, whenever I have like liquid cash, this is how I behave. For example, I do have a friend of mine who tells me, I cannot get out of my house with some cash in my pocket or say in my m -Pesa or whatever the place. You know why? Because I'm likely to consume that money because I know very well in terms of my behavior, I do not have a control over that. So how do I curb that personality? I usually do so by not having liquid cash or money at my disposal, commonly known as the idle money. So today I'm going to take you through the way of understanding what is your money personality. And then from there, you can be able to pick that what applies for you. And then I'm going to give what we call, see, uh, when we bear, you know, with respect to your money personality, I'm going to offer the remedies on how you can handle your personality and what I would suggest you to invest on or do so that at least you don't get yourself into problems or into a problem bearing in mind or due to that specific personality that you have. That's what you're going to get. And guess what? The last one is actually my best. And you stick, we always say we save the last for the best. All right. So let's get into the business. All right. Number one, we have people who are called the spenders. You see, who are spenders? These are the guys who have what we call the consumer mindset. These are the people who believe, hey, money is to be consumed. Money is to be enjoyed. Some people say, hey, uh, they say in Swahili like uh, where chapesa zikweke vizuri or something of sort. So it is good to understand very well uh, what is your money personality. How do you perceive money? So if you are a spender, it means that in most cases, once you get the money, this is the time that you get some forms. We call them forms here in Kenya, whereby it means like hey, going for an outing, going for an uh, for an adventure somewhere, going for a vacation, staycation, and what have you. So it is good to understand whenever money knocks up to your doors, uh, how do you behave? What is your personality towards that money because if you are a spender then it means that you overspend your money you have the consumer mentality and the moment you try to talk about the investment with these type of individuals they tend to develop a certain personality most of it surely becomes a gonoratic way they tend to say hey you know what what if i start business and it fails hey i can give an example of someone who started a business with the same amount of money they fail hey you know what i cannot be able to do exactly that because i can get myself you see they give yourself all the reasons as to why they wouldn't pick that example that you're saying. And if they are at the end of the day, they decide to go ahead and start a business. By the way, I once started or tried to start a business or an investment with this type of a personality. And I am telling you, I had the hardest ride of my show. Because this individual that the people who tells you, hey, explain to me how sure we that our money won't get lost. You see, the moment you find an individual who is telling me or is saying that how sure are we? You see, in business, we are not sure. We are trying, you know. Okay, fine. We have actually put into consideration all other factors on board. Okay. See, we are not just trying anyhow. Anyway, we've looked for the market or what we want to sell. We've looked for the target customers and what have you. But see, there are some things that we are not sure about them. So if you're telling me that I w you want me to assure you that we will make... Uh, there's nothing like that, you see? I, and I'll never ever love to engage into business with somebody who has that kind of a mentality. So if you are a spender, I would advise this. Carbon on having what you call the idle money. Direct your money towards either your savings and it has to be fixed. And also you can direct your money towards investments. That way you are able to actually say, hey, you know what? This amount of money I cannot be able to access right now. Even if something shows up and I would love to grab that thing and what have you. So if you are a spender, that's what you're supposed to do. And number two, we have the savers. The savers, these are the people who save money. All right. And this one can actually be confused with people we call them the holder. There's a difference between a saver and a holder. That's why I've actually like a drone that can slash there. It means that if you are a saver, these are the people who accumulate. You see, to save is to, you know, uh, to salvage, is to set aside, is to store, is to accumulate with a purpose. Three purposes that you ought to save for. One is to buy a certain specific thing, can be a, an asset. Number two is for this emergency purposes. Number three is either you're doing so to acquire capital to invest that money in a certain period of time. So if your saving does not fall under those three categories, then by default now you fall under the category of the people who we call them the holders. These are the people who are... Uh, 
they sort of have this childhood trauma whereby they believe hey money is a scarce commodity it is not out there it is not in plenty uh, you know once you get it you're supposed to hold it as much as you can by the way if you look around have you ever met somebody who has money but they don't even live in a decent life they don't even eat like the best food they never live they hardly even take care of their health there are people who actually they oversave to a point whereby we can even call them they like they are frugal they are minimalist they are mean they are stingy or something of sort so uh once you are idea or the purpose of saving spills over to or it does not fall under the three categories that i've given you then by default it becomes a holding cash so if you hold your money then it means at the end of the day you're not putting or keeping this money for the purposes of investment you're just doing so because maybe perhaps you subscribe to the understanding that hey you can actually become wealthy by default or by virtue of <clears throat> excuse me by virtue of you saving your money which is not the truth or what you're supposed to do or understand is to make sure that hey holding money does not mean you good meaning at the end of the day that money it's actually an idle money that does not generate anything it's an idle money that actually at the end of that it's actually subjected to what we call the inflation it's a bug that actually it's your cash so it's good to understand saving is the most important thing that in most cases i usually advise people to incorporate in their life and i said saving it means that you have to live below your means once you live below your means that it means you create the surplus you save the savings right or rather you save the extras or you save the surplus you accumulate the surplus it reaches to a certain particular amount of money you channel that money towards an investment that investment now generates you a passive income now with the passive income that's now you buy the nice to have things that's how we do it it's so simple said than done yeah i'd not say it's simple either way doing or saying it yeah it requires time dedication so consistency and sacrifice that is exactly how it goes about so if you are a saver tick good there's no problem with that but if you are a holder you're not saving for any purpose then you're going to get yourself into problems so it is good to make sure that at least don't hold but save your money for the purposes of investment then you grow yourself to the next level right now we go to the next point is about the debtors these are the people by default they're going to get themselves into problems all right even if you pay them how much at the end of the month day or the week they're going to get themselves into debts and how do they get themselves into the debt there are two types of debtors yeah the two types of debtors are the debtor number one they are debtors who we call them are they take what we call the consumables you know consumables meaning they fund things that are actually consumable they do not generate anything does not generate anything does not generate any amount of money out there and we have debtors who actually take loans to, for them to invest somewhere so if you are this kind of an individual who is a debtor but you take money to fund the consumables and the reason as to why you're taking this money to fund the consumables is because you are living above your capacity you're living above it's like you're punching above your weight and that's why by the way if you take a very simple example of these guys who do the ufcs the you know the boxings and what have you they have to bring on board somebody who actually you're close or you're equal in terms of weight and all those kind of things all right so you don't punch above your weight so if you are a debtor these are people they always get themselves into loans you pay them today after four five days they do not have money then for them to sustain until they get another salary they have to borrow again once they borrow they channel that amount of money that they have borrowed toward buying you know the consumables likes of the food paying rent paying school fees and what have you all those are consumable does not generate any income other options or other classes of debtors you find these are people who take their money channel it towards investments they have a very good numbers they know how to make by, by the way I'm, I'm telling you this and, and, and most of the wealthy people are very good at debts you know so they, they, they kind of con you know uh, uh, they fall under two categories we call them they are the debtors and they are investors at the same time because you can be a debtor and the de reason as to why you're taking that debt is to invest in future so if you are you know walking along that channel then you're doing it right and that is what is advisable at the end of the day so you can be a debtor there is no problem with debt i'm not saying that you should not should not shouldn't take a loan loan is okay you can take that debt you can actually take that amount of money invest it invest it somewhere and you can actually go ahead at the end of the day channel or get something in terms of your investment so there is no problem with you or for you being a debtor right the problem is is when you take the debt to fund the consumables don't take a debt and buy clothing see that clothing does not generate anything actually it's taking some money out of you why you see that clothing actually loses value with time buying a car that does not even use you don't even use that car in you know in, into something like uh, businesses or investment it does not ease uh, the process of your production 
then at the end of the day, it's, it's a liability. You're just buying it just to make it look, uh, you know, from your peers that you're earning money. That's not good. The last one, but not the least, which is my favorite here, obviously, is about investors. Now, these are guys that uh, I do love them. These are the guy in anything that they do. Be it that they are spenders, they spend when investing. You, you kind of see that. Quite funny. They spend while investing. They save for the purpose of investing. They take debt for the purposes of investing. So at the end of the day, it does not sum up to investing. If it does not sum up to this, then you're doing nothing. It has to sum up. Whatever the thing that you're doing with your money does not mean you're growing, then you're not an investor. So a spender can spend, maybe they're buying a piece of land. So they have spent, but they're buying a piece of land. You get what I'm saying? So they are saving for the purposes of investing in the future. So that's an amazing. So the debtors, they're taking a loan for the purposes of investing. So at the end of the day, it's revolving around investing. So investing is quite an amazing thing. And by the way, when I say investor, they sound like a very complicated name that, hey, it has to be done with a lot of money and all those kind of things. No, that's not the case. See, you can invest. You see, there was a time I said, like, you can invest as low as 100 Kenyan shillings. Just 100 Kenyan shillings. If you're, if you're employed, maybe, let's say, each and every day, you can pay Take that 100 bob and channel it towards a certain money market fund and be able to make some cash. You can check that all a video of mine and you can do something about it. Anyway, guys, guess what? That's the end of my video, but don't forget this. You can pick my number from the description of this specific video. Uh, get me my number and then we can converse. It. I offer services pertaining to investment and as well, I have booklets about investments on different categories. Booklets about money market fund where you can invest as low as 100, just like I said, on treasury bills, treasury bonds. Nowadays, by the way, it's quite simple. You can do so online. Um, uh, things to do with circles, you know things to do with stock shares, you know, all those areas I have booklets ready for you. You can pick a copy and from there we can get started. For now, it's a good buy. But don't forget this. Each and every day I post a video about investments, making money, be it either online or conventional. So if you do want to miss any of my good videos, do this. It doesn't cost you anything. Down below, if you're on your right, there is a small button written, subscribe. Hit that magical button, turn the notification bell. By doing that, a whole YouTube will notify you whenever I upload a new good video. For now, it's a good buy. See ya in the next one.